The behaviour of canine transmissible venereal tumour is very different from that of ordinary cancers. Because an ordinary cancer will start from a single cell in one patient. Sometimes, unfortunately, that cell will grow up and then spread around the body and can result in the death of the patient. But the cancer will not spread beyond the individual person or animal. It'll stay within that person and die with the person. With a canine transmissible venereal tumour, it is a cancer that has arisen once and then has spread from dog to dog all around the world. This is a cancer which has been transmissible through the dog population for possibly hundreds or even thousands of years. The first thing we did was to go to the library to search through old veterinary literature to try to find evidence of this dog transmissible cancer going back through the centuries. Historical literature from 1810 showed us that the cancer is at least 200 years old, but we wanted to use genetics to try to figure out uh, more accurately when the cancer first arose. So to do that, we looked at the number of mutations in the transmissible dog cancer genome, and our estimates led to us predicting that this cancer might have arisen about 11,000 years ago. So we know that this disease lived in some isolated place. We don't know exactly where that was in the dog population uh, until about 500 years ago when suddenly it seems to have spread dramatically around the world several times. It's very interesting to see that this actually coincides with the age of exploration uh, when Europeans were traveling around the world. The genome of this cancer, which is living in all these dogs around the world today, is actually the same genome, or it is the genome, of the original dog that lived all those thousands of years ago. So by looking through the variants in the genome today, we've been able to reconstruct the identity of that animal that lived all those years ago. And actually, we've been able to build quite a nice picture of how this dog looked and even possibly how it behaved. Most human cancers have in the order of uh, between 1,000 and 5,000 mutations. This transmissible dog cancer, however, has uh, 1.9 million mutations. So it's several orders of magnitude more mutations. And that raises the question, how has this cancer been able to survive? In order to survive for 11,000 years, this cancer has had to really do two things. First of all, it has to be able to jump from one dog to another. So somehow, this cancer cell has become very robust in order to transmit across the external environment. But the second thing it has had to do is to be able to evade the immune response. The mechanism for that evasion of the immune response is, we believe, in one or more of those two million mutations that are present in that dog cancer. And the thing we are obviously looking at these cancers in order to inform ourselves about is, could this happen in humans? And if it could happen in humans, we want to learn as much about it from the dog and the Tasmanian devil cancers, such that we are armed if it does happen in humans.